actually held very well, uh, considering on support, but it didn't really go any go anywhere. It didn't go over yesterday's high, but it held. I mean, it held support. I don't know where we go tomorrow. We should gap neutral and rally tomorrow, gap up. If we gap down, we're going to break and fall in here again. So it's too early to say we're going to gap by tomorrow morning early, but we did hold in here. I know this doesn't look fabulous, and I know we we had the big rally up, and then we came in and closed with this little doji guy here, but this isn't this isn't bearish, okay? So we held. It's not a strong hold, but we did hold. That's the slide. Let's look at the cube. And the cues at the left side of this morning. This morning it was holding in a weird placed gap. It was like not a big gap up, but it wasn't a gap down. It was a gap up because we closed here yesterday at 107.16 and we opened morning at 107.33 and we did rally. We did rally up today. We just couldn't get going with it. Again, we couldn't get over yesterday's bar. So it'd be very interesting to see. And for, it's better for the cues we gap up here tomorrow. Actually gap right up here and sit our butt right on the support and then rally. But I don't know. We're, we're just neutral here right now in the, in the post market. Okay. So we'll see where we gap tomorrow morning. But in an ideal world, the market gaps up tomorrow, actually, in both the both ETFs. So does anyone have any questions? Before we look at the stuff for tonight, I know that that Alan had a question. In fact, I'm going to pull up Alan's question. Let me just, I forget what it was exactly. Let me look at it. And anyone else have questions? Because Alan emailed me a long question, and I said, you know what, I'm just going to answer that in the room. Let me find it here. And in the meantime, anybody else write their questions? Okay. Can everybody hear me? I'm going to read Alan's email. And this is probably a question a lot of people may have. First, I'm going to read this question, and then I'll put it back on the chart to show you an example of something uh, to, to answer the question, okay? He said, I noticed you risk 1000 to 1500 per trade, but you put up over 50000 per trade to make 1000 a day. Unless I am missing something, I used to day trade several years ago, and I needed over 25000 in my account. And he's saying, basically he's saying what he's talking about about margin. And then he's like, I thought I read something about a margin account you mentioned to me in one of your emails. So that's the, that was the gist of the question. Okay. Now, first things first. Well, let's go to my old favorite here, JC Tunney. There's two types of trading accounts that you could open up. For yourself. One is a retail, well, actually, there's a million types of trading accounts. I shouldn't say this too. I'm just talking about to be an active day trader. You want to actively day trade when you're in and out, in and out, five days a week, you know, 20 days a month, as many times as you want per day. To be an active day trader, there's two types of accounts. You could be a retail, open up a retail account, in which case the minimum balance to be active as an active day trader is 25000 Your margin is approximately four to one. There are some stock symbols, some ticker symbols that have a higher margin. You don't know that unless you ask the broker. That's not most stocks. I'm just giving in general. It's usually four to one. Every once in a while, you'll have something that has a higher, uh, it'll, it'll take like, you have to have 30, 30, it'll take like a third or something. It'll take more, it'll be more cost position to actually get it. Might be like 33%. But in general, it's four to one. So that's at a retail place. There are something called a proprietary day trading account. You open up an account at a different type of firm. It's called a prop broker. And at those places, it varies the amount of money that you have to put up. Some places you have to put up 5000 Some it's 2500 Some you can open up an account with $1,000. There are many prop places out there. You have to contact them and ask them their requirements. Can you be an active day trader with them? Yes. How does it work? You're getting mar margin uh, based on what that broker is giving you, which sometimes depends on the size of your account, your ability to be able to train, your relationship with the broker, okay, and the place itself. So some of them will give 20 to 1. In other words, if you have $5,000 in the account, you could trade with what would be the equivalent of 100000 in buying power, which at a retail account would be the same as if you had 25000 in it. So you, the advantage, obviously, of being at a prop firm is that you don't have to put up as much cash each day 
to take the same size position. What Alan was saying, and this is where I'm saying I was thinking he doesn't understand the day trading. If a position is, or a stock, is $10 per share, if you take the $10 stock times 5,000 shares equals what? That's going to be the equivalent of what you would need, 50,000 in buying power. Or you can call it margin. All right? You don't need 50,000 cash. All right? Does everyone understand? So if you had an account with 25,000 in a retail place, you'd have more than enough because you have approximately 100,000 in buying power. At a prop place, you might find a prop place. You would. You, there are prop places that if you had 5,000 in it, it would give you 10 to 1 or 50,000 buying power. You could take the same position. Does that make sense? So the buying power is the cost basis of the position. That is what you, the, what you need to have to even take the position. The risk amount, though, is not the cost basis. And I think this is where Alan was confused, and a lot of people are confused that are used to investing. If you are, if you have an investor mentality, uh, what was the one in here? Let's just look at RH. Oh no, RH. There they go. What is the um, and what an investor's mentality is? If I have to put up this much money of to take the position, what is it going to cost me, and how much am I going to make? But you're not putting up 50 grand. You're putting up whatever you take in the position, which I'm going to show you an example, but say it's $1,000, which is what Alan put in the email. Your risk is only 1000 If the trade fails, that's all you're going to lose. Where you put the stop, if the trade fails, you're stopped out. You're day trading your flat every day by 4 o'clock or way before 4 o'clock. I mean, I'm done trading in the morning. You don't lose the cost basis of the position, but you do need to have the cost basis there in the margin to take the position. Does this make sense, Alan? And many, many times investors don't understand this who are used to coming from that type of, of the market, that, that uh, side of the market. Let's go back to six nine. This is a good question, by the way, and I'm sure this will help some people and anybody, anybody that, that has any other questions in the meantime, write it in the room. No, prop, I said, P-R-O-P. Can you hear me? And let's just use this example here to make it easy. Say you shorted RH here, okay? 50 by 75. Say you shorted it. I'm just trying to make it easy. 50 by 75 is what? That's 25 cents. So 25 cents is your risk. So if you took 1,000 shares and you put the stop at 75, you're risking $250. But that's not what it costs you to take it. What it costs you to take it is $29.50 times, the X is a multiplication sign, just so you know, 1,000 shares equals what? And I, I, I don't even remember if this had an extra cost basis in it for the buying power. I never worry about that unless it's an expensive stock, but let's just assume this is straight on, four to one. There. Gene, I thought you were at a prop place. And Gene, I thought you were at the lecture that, that, that the company gave the other week. Weren't you here for the conference? Paul will, will send you that information because I think he taped it. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll address that again in a minute. But the, does everyone, Alan, do you understand here this position if you took a thousand shares of this RH? So, so wouldn't, you would have needed $29,500 in buying power to take it. Okay. But your risk is only what? 250 bucks. If the trade fails, it did not fail. Now, what would you have made in it? Let's just say it got the drop down. It just didn't move a buck or thereabout. But yeah, it did. It moved it, it moved a dollar in the first move. So you would have made $1,000. So profit would have been 1000 So that's a good trade. Why? Because you risked 250 You earned a thousand in investor land, which is not what we do because we're day traders. But investors world, quickly, 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 how much percentage of return on investment is it? Anybody want to answer the question? Paul, you're not allowed to answer. What is it? What is the percentage of return risk to return in that? It's it's insane. So I don't talk like that. Yeah, Gene just said it, 400 percent. 
If I start saying five million percent, you know, I say to make a million with Melissa because it's 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 a it's it's the name of the show of the television show, and it's a great name with alliteration. But the fact is, you can make millions of dollars in the market, but you know, we're not looking to make that in one trade. We're looking to have a good amount of profit each day that we get a good gap with a good move. But I don't talk like investing because if we talk like investing, the numbers would, would blow people's minds and no one would understand anything. And everyone would think I'm making it up. But the fact is I'm not because I just showed you why that was a 400% you know, return on investment. But the investment you're making is not $29,500 because if the trade had failed, which it did not, you would have only lost 250 bucks. You would have lost nowhere near $29,500. That would be impossible. And this is why I like to day trade or do options because my risk is fixed. If you take a swing trade or an overnight or just take a blank position in something, you got to be able to suffer through the ups and downs of a position. You know, you got to be able to do it. I mean, there's no, listen. There's no like perfect scenario where everything is perfect, where the risk is low and the moves are big and, and the time is short and you don't have to suffer and you always get it right and yada, yada, yada. There will always be trains where you will sometimes take a trade and it loses. There will always be. This is the nature of trading. Okay. What you want to do and what you should be doing, and, and if you want to do this and you want to get serious about it, is finding something that works a lot. Period. End of story. And where your risk is confined, meaning the time that you're in the train and the amount of money you're risking, that you won't lose more than you, then you take the trade to risk. And the profit is there, that it makes it worth it for you to take the risk at all. The number of times the trades work and set up and also the moves that it makes, for example, in this. Okay. That's what makes it worth it to trade. But the moves that I do in the gaps happen quickly in the morning, which is why I like to do it. But if you are if you are in an overnight trade, your leverage is two to one. But to be honest with you, you really kind of have to look at it at more than that anyway, because if you don't have a stop in which you won't because you're doing it overnight, what if you get up in the morning? This is the exact reason why things are so good in gas. And let's just go right to the one from tonight. Well, we're just going to talk about live right now that's happening. Well, this, yeah, let's just talk about FDX. And let's just talk about it. This was down a lot more in here earlier. So this is gapping. So it closed. You see here, this is a close. It closed at 164. It's not down a million miles. At one point, it was down here. Do you see this? It was down at 158.50. That was terrible, actually. But that is not holding that down in there. But, but so this is kind of neutral. It is down. But in the first bar, when this had earnings, which just reported tonight, this is a live earnings gap. It's happening right now in FedEx. Oh, FedEx. Love it, love it, love it. You just pick up the phone, you call the 188 number, you have a package, they come. They come immediately. You don't have to do anything. You have to go there. Anyways, here, 164, okay? So this is where it closed. So if you bought this like one second into the close tonight at 164, you bought the stock, you went long it. You're down. You're, you're down in this. Well, here you are. You're down $1.45. So that's the difference. We day trade, and so as a day trade, you would you would not have this kind of risk because, like a couple minutes ago, as like you see here, 45 minutes ago or something like that, it was down to 158.50. You're almost down. Woo! You were down a lot. Okay, you were down like almost six dollars. There's nothing you could do about it unless you want to kill it and get out right now, and it might be hard to get out. It might be actually hard to get out right now in the after hours. So you probably will wait, and you'll wait into the tomorrow, and you'll see exactly what this is going to do tomorrow. And then you'll make an, a, a determination. But to be honest with you, this chart is fine and it looks okay in here. Well, it doesn't look as good as it should, but it'll it'll probably fix itself around again with the market when the market makes a new high. This, this could look a lot better actually. Now that I'm looking at it. this, this this could look a lot better than it does. It's still not bad though. But tonight is a gap. The point I'm trying to make is that you know even if you were on a margin of a normal margin, two to one in an overnight, you can say la la la. I'm only risking. Say you risk 29500 the same as the risk that you had in the RH. The reality is you're really at risk more than that. Does anyone want to, does anyone want to say why? I mean, even guess why? I mean, does anyone know what I'm talking about? Am I making any sense? I'm just kind of going off on a tangent here now, but this is a good question. It's a good question. And this is stuff that I just don't even think to talk to people about because I don't, I don't know what you know and what you don't. And that's why these are good things to ask. Does anyone know what I'm going to say? You could say, well, I have 29500 at risk, but really, you don't. Does anyone know why? Quickly, quickly, quickly. 
I get up in the morning early. We can't be here till seven o'clock. Galahad said, yes, he knows why. Right why, Galahad. Gene talks in code. I think it's, I think he's talking in a foreign language. What does the SL mean? I don't know what that means. BC is because. <laughs> well, what is the SL? Now, I'm saying if you just have a, you just have 100 shares of this or whatever. I'm saying you just have a, or I don't know what it would be. I'm just using the example of 29,500. But just say you have a position where you have at risk, you know, 29,500. Whatever the position would be of shares, it wouldn't be 100 because of the price of this. But I'm just saying, whatever. No, you're, you just, you own the stock. Galahad saying there's no stop in place, but what does that mean? Translation? Go. Anyone. New people. Old people. Bert. Translation. Shalom. You should know the answer to this by heart. No one wants to talk with me tonight. What is the 100%, 100% risk limitless losses? Galahad said, oh, wow, that's a new word. LL. No, it sounds like a stock now. We'll have to come up with another acronym. He's right, though. Does this make any sense? Does this make any sense? Your losses are not 29500 Your losses are unlimited. Why? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. I'll go right to the stock. This poor, 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 poor person. This is a, this, look, it's, this doesn't even trade anymore. I actually have this in the class. And the reason I remember it is because I have it in the class that I looked back a couple of times last year and earlier this year and the year before that. And here it is. It's done. When was the last day of this where it actually said goodbye to the world? Um, I don't even know. I can't even tell. It's this, this doesn't exist. Anyways, it did used to exist. Okay. But here's what happened. Okay. You have a stock. Well, let's go back. I don't even know what this company did or what is it? What is it? Let's go back when it was worth. Oh, when was it worth? When was it worth actually 30? Hold on. I lost it. Price can go up infinity, but it also can go down to infinity. That's the here. I love it can it, it can go up to infinity and beyond. That's what I say about the up. But going down, it can go to zero. And that's the reality. And this has gone to zero. It's going to one penny. It doesn't exist anymore. It's done. Toasty point. So the point I'm trying to make is that one of the one of the things that makes it, I know day trading, everyone's like, oh, day trading, day trading. It's this and that. And the other thing, it's hard to learn, Melissa. And, you know, I've done so many classes and there's so many systems and nothing seems to have the have the uh, level of profitability or the consistency, but gaps really do have a consistency in them if you if you look at them very in-depthly, which I do, which is why, you know, it's, I have this 26 points. But the point I'm trying to make is, though, that if you can learn how to day trade, it is really the best way to make money in the market because you're not at risk for that long. And it's so easy to see where something's going to go very quickly, for me, for me at least, okay, with what I know in the gaps. I can see where something's going to go quickly. I can just see really quickly where it's going to go. And 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 uh, very often I can see in the long term where something's going to go too, but I can't predict the timing of it. So why day, why is day trading great? I can predict the timing of something's going to go there within a certain time frame, the direction for it, and a number close to it, or at least enough of a move to be profitable in the trade. Whether you get out or it goes to the target or you get out when you're up is up to you. But you're not at risk more than you choose to risk if you use a stock, which I always do and always will. And so your amount of money you risk to the 29500 you are not going to lose if the trade fails in body. If you had taken that risk in body, you would have lost not only the 29500 you would have lost every sink and dime in the world and had a margin call in your account. Because the stock went to one penny. Now, you would have been well out to there. The broker would have shut you down or whatever the case may be. And these are very unusual situations, but I'm telling you, this is what happens to people. You think this doesn't happen to people, but it does. And the worst thing that ever happened, and uh, gosh, it was months ago. I think I told this to the room. I don't know if anyone remembers here. 
But but months and months and months ago, my broker had told me a story that um, when when the crash happened, when when all of this nuttiness was going on, it was. I think it was really like in 2000 and 2009 here. Let me look. When 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 this thing happened, when when the bank bailout was going on, when when everything was like you get up in the morning and stuff was down like every other stock. Maybe it was here in 08. I don't know. It was, it was like when mortgage companies were crashing and people would get up in the morning and a company would be gapping down. I'm just looking at the overall market here, but mortgage companies were, were gapping down big and banks were gapping down a lot. And it was just, you know, there was panic everywhere. Okay. This is all back in, it really started in 07 for the mortgage industry, but things started really collapsing. It was known to the world then what was really happening in 2008, 2009. It was all the bank stuff that was going on. Yeah. It was like the fall. It was like the fall of the end of 2008, actually. Yep. And this is where I decided that I wanted to learn how to trade because I was in that industry. And, and every day you get up, somebody was out of business and the stocks were gapping down huge. I wasn't trading then, though. But going back now, looking at it, looking at charts, you can really see what was happening here. Again, this is the overall market. But I'm saying, though, that she had told me a story of a person that was in a stock. And then they got up in the morning and it was a person that was licensed, but they were trading their own money and they were down like a half a million dollars. And, you know, they were in a position and then it got down or whatever. They, they didn't, the company hadn't gone out of business, but they, they had a margin call, a giant margin call. Well, the person, the person never met it. The person never met it. And there was a whole big lawsuit and he lost his license. And that was the end of the story. And he, he didn't meet the call. Either he chose not to meet the call or he couldn't meet the call. And there was all kinds of legal implications. But these are the things that happen when you're in position, you, you, you are at an unlimited risk, like, like Galahad said, because if you don't have a stop in, it could go anywhere. It could go anywhere up or it could go anywhere down. So if you're in a short and it could go anywhere up, you don't know what's going to happen. If you're, if you're in a long, um, it could go anywhere down, you don't know what's going to happen. And that is why it is actually extremely important to understand gaps, even if you don't trade gaps as a day trader like me. Even if you don't take one single solitary trade as a day trade, my class is beneficial to people to learn if you're an investor because you should never take anything unless you understand gas as an overnight trade because that is how people lose their whole accounts and like that guy there where he lost his license and everything he owned. So I, I had a person email me. I'm sure he's not here tonight. He's in, oh, what's the one he's in? I think he's in this. Uh, Sanjeev is saying losses are unlimited if not protected by stop loss order for shorts or longs. Yeah, same difference. Anything you're in, we don't have a stop in. Here, this is the one. Here, this is a great example. And, and it's Robert, and he's not here. Anyways, he had emailed me. He's an investor. He's not a day trader, okay? He's not a day trader. So he said he wasn't interested in the class, but he, he'd email me a referral for a broker or this, that, and the other thing. And then I, I said, well, what are you in? He said he's in these, you know, metals and he's long and he's up, you know, 55% or whatever since the beginning of the year. And I, lo I looked at the charts of the ones he gave me. This is the one I said, I said, oh my gosh, I said, this is a terrible trade. I said, this is a terrible trade. If you're up 50%, get out, get out today, get out tomorrow, get out immediately. But he's not getting out. He's not getting out. That is the chart of this ticker symbol. This is not a long. I don't care if you're up 3,000%. If you're not out, it's never over to the fat lady thing. And that fat lady will sing, okay? If you don't have the money booked, anything could happen in the trade. And this is what happens to people. They become highly, this is, this is very important. I don't know how I even started talking about this. This is a balanced question. I'm going off on this, but this is so important. And this is the reason why people need to understand gaps, whether they swing trade or day trade or do anything at all, anything, okay? And why assessing your risk is important because otherwise your risk is unlimited if you don't have a stop or know what you're doing. And when I take an option trade, I have a set risk. If the trade fails, that's all that I'm going to lose. Same principle as a day trade even though it's overnight. But you're still never now until you get out of the money that's your profit. If you are up and don't take it out, don't you know you can lose the money you're up plus the amount you risk? And if you're in an overnight trade, you can lose the amount that you risk and more. Just like I just explained to you why. Because you don't have a stop in. 
And anyways, many people that trade, that are investors, by the which there is many people in the market, because people find it so much easier to actually swing trade than day trade. To, to me, I don't know why. I have no idea why. Probably because of the fact that swing trades, you can think about it, you can look at it, you can study the charts all day, and you can look at them at night, and you can decide, you can watch something for a couple of days or a couple of weeks or a couple of months. You don't have to make split-second decisions like I do in the trading room if you're a swing trader. I love making split-second decisions. I'm good at it. I love making money quickly, and even if I lose in a trade, I'm out, I'm out fast. So the, the, the suffering doesn't last for me. I mean, people will be in overnight and be down and watch them every day. That's hard to do. Okay? Horrible. It's the worst thing in the world. Anyways, the point I'm trying to make, though, is that if you're in a, in, an investor or you're anyone that's in the market and you don't understand gas, gas can hurt you. But the same thing is you can make money using gas if you know what to do. Many people don't, though. Many, many people don't know at all. And so this man has a huge amount of profit in a trade that he took. Okay? He's not out. I would not be long this. Okay? Which I told him. He insists this is a fabulous, phenomenal, beautiful, amazing, wonderful thing that he's in. Why? Because he's up so much of the percentage. Just going back to the point that I was saying with the Alan and his question. It's never over to the fat lady thinks that you're out in the train. If you're in a trade that's not a good train, what are the chances that it's going to work out for you in the end? Zero. Very low. Okay? So if you take a bad trade and you're up money, whether it's a little, a lot, or a medium, get out. Say, whoo, I got out of that one. That was, I shouldn't have ever done that. I'm lucky I got out. I'm lucky I got out with money, you say to yourself. Okay? And you get out, and you damage control yourself, and you get out. But many people don't think like that because they're up so much. They're up so much in a rally in something like this. They think it's a great trade. They think this is going to $60 or $50 in the next year before the end of the year. Maybe someday it will. Maybe someday it will. Is it predictable that you can predict that this is going to go to $60 right now and tomorrow? The answer is no. I would not predict this to go to $60 at all. In fact, I would predict this to go to $10 before it gets anywhere near 60 And this may go to zero, just like body. So the thing is that what I do with the rating system in GAP allows me to easily predict where something's going to go within the day, okay, of the live day or very soon thereafter, in, in a couple of days after. Okay. Now, on the day of the RH, the RH trade, this did not go to the number that I wanted it to go that day. Well, I said 28 initially in the morning. Dream target was like 25. It did get to 25. It took like four days. You could have done it as a swing trade. But in the live day and the move on this, did you care that it didn't go to 28? No. Did you care it didn't go to 25? No. If you shorted this anywhere right on this day, whether here or here or here or anywhere, if you shorted this, okay, you could have made money shorting this in the day with a risk that was fixed and gotten out. So you, it doesn't matter to you that it doesn't go to 28 immediately or 25 immediately, okay? Again, easier to predict where something's going to go quickly, quickly than in the long run. But I will tell you, can I use my system to look at things in the long run, but the timing no one knows. I mean, no one knows that. I can I can pull out the magic eight ball, but that's not even going to tell me the timing you know, of things, not even the market. So you find a way to make money that you can predict where somebody's going to go in the fastest time frame you can. You can do options or overnight, but you've got to use gas to predict them because it would be impossible to predict when this thing here is going to go anywhere near the high or anywhere near any other number at all. In fact, you can't predict it. Why? Because it's in the opposite direction of the way that it's trading. It's in the complete and opposite direction of the way that it's trading to predict this is going to go anywhere near $30 or $50 or $40 or $60. It is not trading enough trying to reach those numbers. The idea of predicting that it could go there in any, any point in our lifetime is insane because it's not in an uptrend. This is in a downtrend. This is in a downtrend period, end of story. So, Point in fact, getting back to Alan's initial question, he's saying about how much money you have to risk. If you have a, if you have a proprietary day trading account, you can open up one with $2,500 and you can probably get $25,000 in buying power and trade. If you have a retail account, you're going to need $25,000. You will use a stop, you'll have a fixed risk that you will lose the trade fail and you make money if it works. If you want to talk about percentages, some of the percentages of the trades that I've taken is insane, whether they're options or the other ones too. And the time of them happens fast. 
For the long-term trades, though, it's important to know how to trade gaps, too, because you can get hurt in something, because you could be up a lot of money, like in something like this. And when your head starts to get blow up like a big balloon, you think you've got the greatest trade of your life, because it's gone nothing but up since you took it. But that's not true. And it's not true to the very fact that, that gaps happen in stocks and ETFs in the market. And a gap can wipe out all the profit that you have in something and wipe out your whole account if you were in an overnight. Now, that's not what I do, okay, because I always use a stop. That's what I'm telling you. But it is that and that type of mentality that investors have that actually makes it possible for me to make money doing what I do. And I see that when I look at a chart very, very often. I will see that and I will be able to predict that so-and-so will be, you know, absolutely down tons and tons of money and will have no other choice other than to sell. Now, whether that person will sell with less of a, uh, money being up or whether they will sell and actually be down or break even or get out without being hurt or lose their whole account, I don't know. But know this, the, mar the broker will have a margin call if that happens to you. And this is what happens with investors. And I see investors, even, even traders that are small swing traders, but it happens. And it's because people think they know what they're doing. They think they know what they're doing, but they don't. Because they will look at this and say, oh, the moving averages in the 8 and the 20 and the 50 and the 200 period moving average are, are rallying and are rallying since the beginning of the year. And actually, look at this. It's a beautiful thing. This is actually stronger than the market, so-and-so would say. I would say, really? Really? No. No, it's not. It's not. And this is the other thing getting back to the market where I'm saying the market can make new highs. People are looking at this and say, Melissa, Melissa, it's, this has gone nowhere. It's going to make a new high. But it's because I'm reading the gaps. I'm reading the gaps in the market and I'm reading the gaps in AUI. And so this is how you know. But this is what makes it possible because so many people are doing stuff and they're doing stuff that they're, that they don't have a strategy to do it. And I can't, I can't tell you how important that is. Buying support and shorting resistance isn't a strategy. It helps you pick trades and it helps you put in a stop. And it may help you with an entry, but it's not the reason to take the trade at all. It's not a reason to take it. Okay. Does that, did anything I just say make any sense? And I answer Bert's question ad nauseum, but does anyone else have any other questions? Let's look at the earnings out tonight. One was Adobe. And let's talk about this, and then, wait, let's just quickly do a scan here. FDX, FDX, look, FDX was down at 158 something. This is, a, this is nothing. Don't do anything with this tomorrow. Just let it sit in a spot. As of right now, if it's open today, tomorrow, I wouldn't do anything with this. You can't go long. You can't go short it. Let me look at the KBH. This is up. So the builders are probably going to be up tomorrow. Let's look at this. Well, this is okay. This isn't like fabulous. Maybe. And the other one I think was too thin. What was the other one? Lazy boy. This is doing nothing. This is up a little bit. This isn't up like a million miles. And it's too thin anyways. These are the only ones for tonight. All right, let's look at Adobe. In fact, does anyone have any other questions? If you're doing overnight, you should have small, small size and trades or a lot of money. Day trading, you know, you can you can day trade without a lot of money, and you can do options without a lot of money. But if you're doing overnight, you, you need a lot of money. I should be doing like five shares or something, or one share or something. Honestly, it's just you know, and many people don't know don't know what they're doing. But but that is what makes it possible to get the kinds of moves and the things that we do when they gap, whether they gap up or down. You know. Um, okay. Does anyone have any other questions? That was a good question by Bert. I think I answered it. Uh, Adobe. Let's look at it. Now, I thought Adobe would gap up. I was so certain it would gap up. Anyways, to make a long story short, I called an option trade in this today, a call, and I gave a couple different numbers. Guess what? It ran up immediately, almost immediately, like absolutely immediately. So anyone that did the call that was sitting at their computer to take the trade at the moment that I made the call was up, ran up right away. This just goes back to what I was saying as far as predicting what something can do immediately. Let's look at the one-minute chart in here. And then we're going to talk about the gap. What's today? I oh, know this is the night. Hold on. Here. So this yeah, options you can do with day trades or you can hold them overnight. Okay. You have to have the ability to take the option in your account. Now, what's the difference with this? The difference with an option is it's, it's easier to, to take them with more expensive stocks, which Adobe is, because you don't have to worry about the buying power. This is what Alan was saying. 
you wouldn't have to have the buying power. If you took a thousand shares long of Adobe, okay, let's say at 9850, you would need 98,500 in buying power. But if you did an option and you wanted to risk, you know, 240 bucks, okay, you, you could risk 240 bucks and take a position in this that you wouldn't need 98,500. So you could have taken 100 shares of this, okay, and spent 240 bucks. And this was as a call today as an option. Anyway, that's a lot of a gap up. It didn't. It's gapping down, but it didn't matter. It ran right up to the. It ran right up to the strike price. You could have just done it as a day trade, and that's exactly then what I ended up doing. And I'm not going to go into further discussion about this, but for those of you that want to come back, I'm doing a webinar tomorrow night at 4:30. I'm going to talk about money in the webinar because I had a big discussion today about this very trade uh, with my broker about this because it was a whole long thing about the fact that very often I call things that go right away to the numbers, and this was one of them. I thought that this would hit up to 100 on the actual earnings. It's not. It didn't. Now, it very well may go there between the options expiration, which is until July 15th. But I'm saying, though, that I saw that this would go there, and then it did. It literally did before the close of business today. How did I know that? Because I had a chart. I just read the chart. I read the chart, and it, and it went right there. Now, on the gap, it's not, it's not, this isn't going to go to 100 tomorrow. No way. And I don't know how this acts tomorrow, and I could, I'll write this gap as short tomorrow, to short it. But, the, but there was a long in this today, which I gave the call to people, and it went right to the number. So, again, going back to the principle, what I was saying, it is, it is so easy to day trade, day trade options or day trade just straight equity stuff, because it's, it's easy to determine from the gap and also watching the price action where it's going to go or the move it's going to make, or the directional move it's going to make, but it's all based on the gap. You can't see this now, and it's skewed, because this is happening live overnight, and it's actually ruined the bar here for the day of the daily chart, because it's actually making the gap here now live. But the fact is that this actually was green. Uh, this actually closed here around this number here, 99.69. So actually, this was a green body bar. It closed close to the top. You can't see it now, but it actually was green, and it actually had a gap up today. We actually gapped up today in Adobe and ran up. So it was a nice long in the day, but tomorrow it might be short. But either way, it would be a day trade, and it was a day trade today. Uh, the moving averages in my charts, this is the 8th, this is, oh, this is the 8th, this is the 20, this is the 50, this is the 200, Joe. And I use just simple moving averages, okay? So it, it, it is easy to predict what something's going to do if the gap rates good. If the gap doesn't rate good, I'm not trading it at all, because I feel like I, I don't have a high level of predictability. The part of the system that I do is the rating has to be more than 20 points. I say 26 is the tally. Obviously, the higher the rating, the better, but it's got to hit over 20. If it's not over 20, if it's not 20 or more, I'm not doing it at all. I'm not doing anything with it. I'm not flipping it. I'm not reversing it. I'm not doing anything at all with it. In fact, I'm already warned though today. I didn't do this, but I, I just looked at it. Well, this went nowhere, actually. I'm trying to think with the one, what was the other one? Was it Ralph or Ryan? Anyways, it's the idea of the predictability of the move that it will make and the time frame that, that you'll make it. Here, this is the one that flipped for this. Yes. And we didn't we didn't touch this with the 10-foot pole. Ralph the Ren gapped down on the day on 6-7 and ran up like a banshee. This ran up 10 points. Look at that. I never realized it ran up 10 points in the day. This chart looks like crap, though. I'll tell you that. But on the on the live day of the of the earnings, when this reported, it actually gapped down, but was not as short, and it rallied. I didn't do it. I don't. I think I didn't even rate it. That's how little I liked it. And it wasn't as short. But I didn't go long this. Okay. I didn't go long the stock in here. If you had, you would have made money. But it's not a, it's not a, it's not a good law. That's the point I'm trying to make to tell this person that's talking about this one here in the AUI. Or no, AAU, what, sorry. Anyone else have any other questions? Here, yeah, th th this person's long this, and it's not a good long. That's the point I'm trying to make. Okay. Know what you're doing. That's the best thing that I can say. Know what you're doing. You could be up money and not know what you're doing. Will you get out of it when you're up? Maybe. Sometimes you might, sometimes you might not. In the end, will you end up winning overall in the longer term if you don't know what you're doing? No, you won't. You'll lose. So you could you could take 30 trains, not know what you're doing, 
Make money in five of them. Think you know what you're doing. Keep trading, keep trading, keep trading, keep trading. By the end of the year, you're down. Because you think you know what you're doing, but you don't. But you know you had some good trades in there, and you don't understand. It seemed to work on some of the days, but on some of the days, it didn't. You know, it took me three years to develop my system. I mean, this isn't, you know, this wasn't a cakewalk in the park for me to figure it out. But I'm telling you, it works because it really pinpoints where something's going to go in a way of predictability for the short term and the long term. Now, I, like I said, don't do long terms unless I'm doing an option because I don't want to have unlimited risk. I want to have a fixed risk in whatever amount I'm trading. And you need to be okay with that. And this is what I'm going to talk about more tomorrow night about money. You need to be okay with that. And you need to know what that is. And if you're not okay with it, you won't trade well no matter what you do because you'll be trading in fear. So I don't know what we're doing now tomorrow because I, I didn't expect Adobe to gap down tonight. I might, well, I will rate it. I will rate it as a short, but I'm not, I'm not saying I short this. I, I don't know. Uh, and the market has to hold and could gap up or I don't know what this does, but there's a bunch of things tomorrow morning that report as well. My, my gut conviction is that is in the BBY to be the big trade this week, whether it gaps up or gaps down. I don't know. That's since Wednesday night. But does anyone else have any other questions? I think this is a good discussion. A lot of people don't understand what I do, but I don't, I don't know if know what to explain when I'm talking to people in a webinar because I don't know what you know and I don't know what your background is. And quite frankly, a lot of classes and places and other educational courses out there don't teach anything that I teach. So I don't, I don't know what they teach to tell you the opposite or that it was the same. So if you don't ask me a question, I don't, I don't know what you know because I, you know, haven't been to these other places. And, and this, this idea of just buying support and shorting resistance is not a strategy. I'm not saying I don't look at support and resistance. Obviously, I do. But it is not the be-all, end-all to me, and it's not the reason I take a trade. It shouldn't be the reason you take a trade either. Okay. You have to have a system that you follow that has a level of predictability. If every support area held, no one lose any money. And if every resistance area held, nobody would ever lose any money. So that's not the case. It's one of the reasons why this market is going to blow when it gets up over the high. This market has made a resistance. You can say it's resistance. You can say it all day long. Melissa, it's resistance. It's resistance. It's, it's holding the resistance at 212. Yes, okay, I see that. There it is. Yes, but it's going to get over it. Okay. And the level of predictability, me predicting that it's going to get over it, is the fact that I know how to read the gaps in this chart. The gaps that are up, the gaps that are down. I read what they're doing, and I have the rating system to tell me. That's how I was able to predict that we would hold this area, which we did. Follow through higher, even though we haven't made it up over the high. But there are people that are in overnights that are short this market, and they and they'll swear up and down. It could be a, they could be up money like that guy I just said. They could be up fifty percent. They could be up a million dollars, and they swear it's not made up over the high, and that this market's going to collapse. It's really too long. It's going to fall. It's going to go back down to one eighty, and then it's going to go to one seventy five, and then it's going to go to one sixty, and then blah blah blah. Maybe, maybe someday it'll go to 180. Maybe someday it'll go to 175. Maybe someday the market trend will turn. It'll actually be in a downtrend and will fall. And then I'll short the world because I love to short. And I won't complain at all, but I'm telling you, it's not going to go there now. There's no time frame of predictability that it can. It is predictable that the market will get over the high and most likely still this calendar year in 2016. It is very late in the year. I thought we'd do it much before now. But when we do do it, the move will be very strong. And it will be strong because of the reason, like the question Alan said, there are people that are short the market overnight. And some of them will, will cover, that will create buying. And then some of them will not cover. They will not cover. They will let the market rally up again, hit another area, refuse to, to get out, have no stop in, be down money, be able to weather the storm, which some people can do because they have a lot of money. Weather the storm, be down, be down, down, down in that trade and not get out. Let it pull back short more, swearing then that it has hit the top and that this is the top. And then they short it. They short more and they double down, which is a terrible thing to do, by the way, and don't ever do it. They double down at a higher price, cost hours themselves up, take a larger position, and the market hits over the high again. And this is, you know, it's a long, long process that I could give, I could go through a chart and give an example of a million things to show you that happening. But the point is that the way I read gaps, it allows me to predict what somebody's going to do. Realistically predicted in the live day in the few minutes or in the longer term picture in a realistic fashion. You could say anything's going to any number in the world, but you have to get the overall direction right in any trade that you take for the time frame that you're in it. And, and if you're in a short-term trade, 
where you're in it for a couple minutes, then you got to make money on that day. And you got to get out way before four o'clock if you're me and before four o'clock if, if you're a day trader. Otherwise, you're stuck in it overnight. And if you're in that puppy overnight, you better be in it in the right directional bias for the long term. And many people are not. But that is what allows us to make money as day traders on gas because of the very fact that many people are not. Because many people don't, don't know how to read a chart. I mean, they just flat out do not know how to read a chart. I trade the gap, Joe. Joe is saying, do I trade relative strength or weakness to the market? Um, I, I will look at the market, but I'll only lose that as far as targeting. In other words, like let's just say, for example, say, for example, I wanted a short of daily tomorrow. And I'm not saying I do that at all. And I'm not writing the gap tonight. I'm too tired. But let's say you got up in the morning and I decided that it was a good short tomorrow. How would I use the market in reference to that? Well, let's say the market gaps down. Let's say the market, let's say the market gaps down. And I say, oh, the market's a short. And I say Adobe's a short. Then I might hold Adobe to a bigger target if I thought I had the market with me. That's how I'd look at it. Or if the market gaps up and I feel the market is going to hold and rally and have a big day up and I'm in Adobe short, I might not hold Adobe long to the dream target. I might get out quick. But I like to get out quick anyway. So it's kind of a mute point. So that's how, that's why I would look at it for that. But, but to be honest with you, Joe, in a good gap, somebody could go to a dream target without the market at all. The market could be rallying up like a crazy person all day, and I could be in a short, and it falls off a planet. So I don't even want to say that. There's no rules about that. Do I look at it? Yes. Is that the reason I take the trade or don't take the trade? The answer is no. I might look at it for a target, but then again, I might not. I could have a fabulous, beautiful 24-point gap and on a day when the market's power trending up, and it could go to some crazy number. So there's, there's no rules for that. I look at it. But it's not the reason I take the trade or don't. I hope that answers the question. Good, good talk tonight. Does anyone else have any other questions? Good, good talk, the discussion. And um, you know, I, I think that these, all of these things. Try to come back tomorrow night at 4:30. If you don't have the link, Paul, put the link in the room for the webinar for tomorrow night at 4:30. It's at a different location. It's not here. And I'm going to talk a little bit about money management in that in that webinar tomorrow night. I. I think that, you know, you have to decide if, you know, why you're doing this. I mean, obviously, we're all doing this to make money. But you do need to know, are you doing this because you want to get in and out quickly as a day trader or you want to be in overnight? You do need to know your time frame for things. Personally, I like the day trains because of the fact that I can use a stop. I'm in and out quickly. I'm in and out quickly when I win and I'm in and out quickly when I lose. In minutes, sometimes, or the longest, it would be an hour or something, but that's a long time. And I, and I like that. It's less stress and you're less at risk. But even if you're a long-term investor, my system will teach you things about what positions to be in because you can really hurt yourself when you're not in something right. And, and you know, it's, it's just one of these things where in the market, anything can happen. You could be up a lot of money in a bad trade and you could lose that profit and you could lose money in the trade itself because you're not out of it yet. And it's the same thing for a trade that you would take as a day trade when you're up. You could take a day trade and be up in it, knock it out, and it could pull back against you and get stopped out. And and, and that happens to me sometimes, and i got to get better with it because I'm realizing more and more, you know, that the market's a little choppy here in the summer. And sometimes we're just going to have to scalp some things. Uh, what is the recommended minimum trading account? I prefer shorting Ajax. Yes, absolutely. If things drop and move faster, there's more panic that comes in. The selling action and buying action is no panic in buying. So you have faster moves and shorts. That's why I like it, and I like them quickly. Uh, what are the recommended minimum trading account? Whatever you can afford. If you, I could, I could recommend you to open up a, an account, you know, at a prop place with a certain amount or a retail place with a certain amount. But if you can't afford it, then you can't do it. I mean, obviously, everyone wants to make a lot of money trading, but you can't open up a five thousand dollar prop account and risk. $2,000 in a trade, that would be insanity, okay? You have to look at your account size, what you can afford to put up in an account that will determine probably where you trade, whether proper retail, and then you find out the buying power that that place will allow you, whether four to one or 10 to one, and then you find out how much money you feel comfortable mentally to risk on the day yourself. So if you have a profit account with $5,000, are you okay losing 250 bucks? If you are, 
You could take one trade and risk 250, or you could take two trades and risk 125. I would say at least budget yourself for two trades. But if you lose $250 and take two trades with a $5,000 account, are you going to be out, get, all, get up tomorrow and press the button? Or are you going to have a conniption and not sleep at night? If not, then maybe you only risk $100, okay? So you need to know what your uh, risk tolerance is, and, and that has to do with two things. One, the money that you have, cash, and also your emotional tolerance level to risk. I have a very high tolerance to risk. I'm absolutely fearless, okay? But I am, I am conservative in the point that I, I um, am thoughtful and know, know in my brain that the trade, if it fails, I'm not going to lose my whole account. So I'm thoughtful about it with the amount of money that I'm risking per the size of my account. Does that make sense? So I'm not willy-nilly saying, woo, let's take a million shares of this and hold it overnight. Risk the farm. No, I don't trade like that. So I'm fearless when I take my trade. And I have 100% conviction when I do. And, I, and I'm, a, I'm a gutsy girl. But I still consider the amount of money I'm risking. If the trade doesn't work, I need to be know that I'm okay emotionally and cash-wise and financially. And this is about financial stability. And this is just... It's just plain flat out being responsible. I mean, it's like, should you balance your checkbook every month? Yes. Have I been doing it lately? No, I'm too busy. Do I know that I should? Yes. Is the world going to collapse and explode if I don't balance it? No, because I get up every day and I look at my balance before I pay a bill to see that I have the money in there for it to pay the bill. Should I balance it? Yes. Do I balance it? No, I'm behind. But I know how much money I have in there, and I know when I write out the check that the check will be paid. So the reality is don't write the check and take the trade if the check can't be paid. Okay? <laughs> I think it's a good analogy. William the Killer, what do you think about prop trading? Um, you know what? I think it's good for people to start out. I think it's, I think it's, I think it's great for people to start out. I think it's great that it even exists for people to start out. When I started out, I went to retail place and then I started losing because I hadn't figured out my system and then I went to a prop place. So a prop place helped me go through the ups and downs of what I went through figuring out the system. So I'm, 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 I'm not anti prop places. I think you have to be considerate of where you go, do the research, get a referral, don't go to a place you don't know any place about. It's got to have the shorts if you're going to do my system, all right? You got to know the people. But it's in, in 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 general, I would say I don't have a problem with them. If you can't afford to trade at a retail account, what are you going to do? You can still trade and go to a prop place. There's a bazillion out there. I say get a referral. Don't go to some place off the net. Okay. Do your due diligence of vetting the place from a referral, and then you experience it yourself. Okay, with the with the place. So I, I don't I, can't, I don't want to say to you I don't even know how to pronounce your name IFE I'm not sure I I don't know what to say to you how much to risk because a recommended minimum trading account to somebody I could say thirty thousand to one person another person I could say five okay if you're if you're trying to make a half a million dollars a year could you make that with an account with five thousand well maybe in Disney World. Or La La Land, but that's not realistic. So you got to you got to look at your goals and the money that you have, and you got to be realistic about it. Okay, is it is it realistic that over the course of the next two to five years, you could build that five thousand dollars account up to something where you could start taking more risk to get to the point where you want to make a lot of money? Yes, but you know you have to start from what you have. And I say the longer that you wait to start, the longer it's going to take you to get there. It's like riding a bike or or learning how to play the piano or a foreign language, all right? These things, these things take time. You want to make a certain amount of money. You want to get to a point where you're quitting your job or you're making 200 grand a year. If you have $5,000 and you, you can't run out tomorrow and do it, not knowing a darn thing, not taking my class and just risking this much money and blowing it all on the farm, you have to say, all right, let me get a plan of action together. I'm going to take Melissa's class. I'm going to learn the system. I'm going to risk $100 a train. Then I'm going to build up a 5,000 account to 10,000. Then after I get to that, then I'm going to up my risk. Then I'm going to risk $500 a trade. And then I'm going to start really going at it or whatever the case may be. 
Then you build it kind of up to wherever you feel like you have it, that you've got the buying power that you feel comfortable with, 100,000 buying power you should say to people is good. It's a good amount. So you build it up that you have that much, okay, margin, okay, not cash. And then you start paying yourself outside of that, and then you go from there. You have to have a plan of action. And, it, and how long it takes you to get to your goals depends on your goal and how much money you have. Some people have very realistic goals. I, I find talking to people more and more, I'm going to say this last thing and let everybody go because I've been talking for an hour. But some people have very realistic goals. I, I'm surprised when people email me and they say, I just want to make $1,000 a week or I just want to make $500 a week. I mean, the people that have very, very small goals, realistic goals, I, I think I think is great because they don't get upset with themselves. When a trade doesn't go to a target, it's some crazy dream target. The people that... That, that have an issue get upset if they don't run out and make 10 grand the first week or something doesn't go to a dream target. You know, this is, this is real life people. Okay. You learn it. You do it. It's a process. You've got to live in the moment with what's happening here. Some trains will be phenomenal trains. Some trains will be losers. Some trains will be mediums. Some trains will be small. Some trains you will never forget. If you're doing the system and you're learning it and you're doing it right, most of the trades that I call work in the entries. I'm, I'm, I'm one of the best people out there as far as calling entries. And I don't think it matters if it's a day trade or an option. Almost every trade I call is up money almost the second that I take it. Whether, whether I take it out or not is up to me though. There are some times when I take a trade and immediately flips and sales and I look, I take the loss. But I would say of the percentage of trades that I actually take and I'm not talking about where I get out. I'm just talking about take or call. I probably is like it's probably ridiculously high. In fact, Paul should just track that. It's probably like 95%. But I don't get out of all of them myself, even if I'm up sometimes, because sometimes my expectations for what I want exceed what the stock wants to do. And I may take a trade and be up money in it. I'm not talking about a penny. I'm talking about I could be up 20, 25, 30, 30 for 40 cents in something but be looking for a dollar and the stock doesn't give it and I don't get out and I end up with a loss, okay? Some days that happens and I'm, I'm realizing more and more with the options, with the day trades, that my ability to take an entry is like my, my, just the speed in live market time, which we're not in live market time right now. The market's closed, even though we have the closed market. It's phenomenal. And it is because of my ability to be able to read price action and gas that I can take a trade at a certain price and predict that it will move in my direction quickly. That move could happen in one minute, two minutes, three minutes. It could be up money or it could go right to the target. The problem is where are you going to get out? Sometimes I take a trade and I don't get out and I could be up money and knock it out. And this is where money management and all these things come into play. And I think the longer I trade and the more money I risk, it really becomes something that you have to be thoughtful about. We'll talk about this more in the webinar tomorrow night, but it is definitely, definitely something I've noticed for myself because I've increased my risk, uh, you know, in doing these options. And, I, and, I, and in general, as far as my day trading, I'm considering increasing my risk for earnings season, not right now, but in July. And I think that the better that you get as a trader, which I am over the years progressing, you can risk more money. And then, then what does it matter if it doesn't go to the target? If the number of trades that you take and the entries that you call them works very, very high, you can risk more money in the trade. And the money that you get out then is profit, and you have more winners than losers, and that's all that matters. And this is not just in the pick and the move of the pick of the directional bias, but also in the entry, which I'm very good at. And you learn that in the class. But it's really, you learn it in the class, the six different entries, but if you don't know how to do them, you know, you're, 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 you're going all over the place. You're buying moving averages. You're buying support. You're... You're shorting resistance, but it's not really resistance. It's it's nothing, actually. You didn't think I used options? I I started to do, well, no, last year I started to do options as occasionally, occasionally. I'm not doing them every day. Don't think I'm doing them every day. I'm not. Occasionally, occasionally, occasionally. And they're usually on something done in earnings. I might take it and get it right out, or I might take it and hold it overnight. It's, it's occasionally, not every day. I'm an active day trader for an equity trade. I'm not an active options trader. I will do them when I see them. Some make no sense to do. Does that make sense? Ajax, but I did start doing them last year. 
Joe is asking me, do I share my profit and loss records with my room traders? No, I don't need to do that. They're there every day with me. They, they know. Some of them are tracking my trades. Some of them are doing the trades with me so they know. Some people don't listen to what I say. <laughs> that are in the room. There's, there's no reason for the room to track it every day. Some people do, though. I told this story last week. I was a gentleman booth. He tracked my trades for a year before he took any live trades. And actually, I think Art of Trading is tracking trades now. I don't know if he's trading live or not, but even the days it's not there, he emailed me what I did. So I think Art of Trading might be tracking them. But I thought he was trading live. I don't know. So so the room people, some of them have tracked them, some of them don't. But they, but they know what they're doing. Some people have to have their own way of doing things. I like to short. As somebody asked earlier, I, I prefer to short. Some days in the room, people want to do a short and long. Uh, Trader Gal, I think, is doing shorts and longs now. She was just doing the shorts. Now she does the shorts and the longs. Uh, Big Fudge is starting to do longs. You know, I, I prefer to short. Okay. All right. Have a great night, everyone. Have a fabulous night. I will see you all when I see you. If you're interested in coming to the webinar tomorrow night, Paul, put the link in the room. If you're interested in the Golden Gap class, it's this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. And I don't know what we do tomorrow. We'll have to see. Adobe, it may be a short tomorrow. And for those of you that did the option and didn't get out when it ran up to 100, you'll make the money if we do this tomorrow in the short, so don't worry about it. But if you're in it until July 15th, I have to see how the gap is. Because if I see the gap tomorrow is not a good short, I, I would hold to the trade. I would hold to the trade because it very well might go to the number. You got three weeks, almost a month. Oh, okay. You didn't do it. All right. Very good. All right. I'll see everybody tomorrow.